Hey everyone, Brian here from Native Instruments. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the Complete Control S-Series Mark II with Pro Tools and basic functionality to get you up and running as quickly as possible, so let's get started. Using a USB cable, connect one end into the back of the keyboard and the other end into your computer. If you are using the S88 Mark II, you will also need to connect the included power supply. The next step is to turn on the keyboard by pressing the power button on the back of the hardware. Now that the keyboard is connected to your computer and powered on, you can now open Pro Tools. Navigate to your Applications folder by going to Go at the top and select Applications. Find Pro Tools in your Applications list and double click to open. Let's first name this project and then click Create. Once the main Pro Tools window is open, we'll configure the advanced integration. Go to the top and select Setup, Peripherals, and then go to the MIDI controller tab. Open any of the type pop-up menus, I'll select the first one, and select Complete Control. After you select Complete Control, the Receive From, Send To, and number of channels will be automatically set. With the advanced integration set up, you can use the Complete Control S series to control various aspects of Pro Tools directly from the hardware. This advanced integration also works with the Complete Control A series and M series. Let's first create a click track by going to Track at the top and selecting Create Click Track. Now we'll load up an instrument so we can hear some music and I'll use hybrid keys from Complete 13 Select. I'll click Track at the top and select New. I'll set this to Stereo, Instrument Track, and name this Hybrid Keys, and then click Create. I'll select the first empty slot for Insert A through E, Multi-Channel Plugin, and Instrument. Hybrid Keys is a contact-based instrument, so I'll select Contact. I'll find Hybrid Keys in Contact's browser on the left, click on Instruments, and double-click on Hybrid Keys 2.0.nki to load the instrument. Let's record something using the functions on the left side of the keyboard. You have dedicated buttons for the most important and frequently used functions in Pro Tools. You can first turn on and off the metronome using the dedicated metronome button when a click track has been created. Next, you can turn on and off the count in or, in Pro Tools, the count off by holding shift and pressing the record button. This will give you by default a two bar count off before Pro Tools starts recording. You can change the length of your count off by double clicking the two bar area and typing in your desired count off length. To record something, I'll first press the record button and then press play. I'll wait for the count off and then begin playing. Once I'm done, I'll press stop. Let's loop these four bars by selecting the recording and pressing the loop button on the keyboard. I can also move my time selection by holding the loop button and turning the encoder. If I ever need to undo or redo an action, I can press the undo button or hold shift plus undo to redo an action. Let's add in a baseline. Back in Pro Tools, I'll select Track, New, Stereo, Instrument Track, and click Create. I'll select an empty cell for Insert A through E, Multi-Channel Plugin, Instrument, and Reactor 6. I just want to play an instrument rather than build one, so I'll select Play. For my bass sound, I'll use Monarch, so I'll find Monarch in Reactor's browser on the left and double-click monarch.ens. On the right side of the keyboard, you have a four-directional encoder, which lets you rotate, click up, down, left, or right, 
and push in to select. I can quickly switch between my different channels using the encoder. I'm currently on my Monarch track, and you can hear this preset when I play my keys. Clicking up on the encoder now switches to my first channel and arms the track so I can play this instrument. Rotating the encoder clockwise or counterclockwise lets me scrub forwards or backwards through the track. Let's record in this part. Now that I have two parts recorded, I want to balance the volume levels of them. I can press the mixer button, and now the displays show me my channels and Pro Tools. Using the knobs below, I can increase or decrease the volume for each track. I also have mute and solo buttons that let me mute or solo different channels by holding a mute or solo button and pressing the rectangular button above each channel. If you have a project that has more than eight channels, you can use the left or right arrows to access the other channels. You can also adjust the pan settings for each channel by holding shift and clicking up on the encoder. The same knobs below each channel adjust the pan settings. For a complete S-Series and Pro Tools integration, click the link in the description to view the integration cheat sheet. In addition to being able to control Pro Tools, if you are using the Complete Control plugin to load your instrument, there's a lot more functionality from the keyboard, so let's take a look. In order to access the other features of the keyboard, you will need to load up the plugin Complete Control. Complete Control allows you to easily browse, tweak, and preview all of your sounds and much more. If you are just loading Contact or Reactor, you still have the advanced DAW integration, but you won't be able to smartly browse or tweak your instruments from the hardware. Whenever I want to use a new instrument, I always load up Complete Control first. I'll click Track at the top and select New. I'll set this to Stereo, Instrument Track, and name this Complete Control. One thing to note is if you don't create this as a stereo track, Complete Control won't show up in your plugins list. I'll select the empty slot for Insert A through E, Multi-Channel Plugin, and Instrument. If you don't see Complete Control in this list, make sure you first created a stereo track and that you have Complete Control installed by checking Native Access. Once Complete Control loads, you'll see the display on the keyboard has changed, asking me to press Browser. On the hardware, I'll press the Browser button and now I can search through all of my Complete Control supported plugins. Using the knobs at the bottom, I can first scroll through all of my instruments. All of the NI instruments are supported in Complete Control and also hundreds of plugins from different companies. Their products show up on the display just like an NI instrument, giving you a seamless browsing experience. Let's scroll down and select Ethereal Earth, which is part of Complete 13 Select. Once it's selected on the left, I can use the knobs on the right to filter my presets list to find a sound quickly. The knobs are touch capacitive, so when I touch the knob, the filtering pops up on the right display. Filtering refines your presets list, letting you find the sound that you're looking for quickly. I'll select Synth Lead, Classic Poly, and the preset list results are now smaller. As I scroll through the presets, you hear audio previews for every preset, NI and NKS instruments, so I know what the preset sounds like without actually having to load the instrument. I'll click load at the top, and now I can start playing the instrument. Every NI instrument and NKS instrument have all of the instrument parameters mapped to the eight knobs below the display, giving direct control of your instrument from the keyboard.
Many instruments have more than eight parameters, so I can use the left and right arrows to switch between the different banks. If I want to change a preset, I can go back to the browser, or I can use the preset up or down buttons on the hardware. You can also load effects from the hardware and create an effects chain. I'll press the button at the top to go to the next slot, and then press browser. What you're seeing on the display are all of my complete control supported effects. In addition to the NI effects, there are also NKS effects such as waves or isotope. Just like instruments, I can filter for a type of effect that I'm looking for, like a distortion effect or something creative. Once it's loaded, I can use the eight knobs to customize the effect and use the left or right arrows to navigate the banks of parameters. When running your instruments through Complete Control, you also have access to the Smart Play features such as Scales Mode or Chords Mode. Scale Mode allows you to choose different scales so you can never play a wrong note on the keyboard, and it's also a great learning tool. Pressing the Scale button enables Scale Mode, and holding Shift and pressing the Scale button allows you to edit the scale. The knobs at the bottom let you choose between a wide range of scale banks, and the second knob lets you choose different scales. No matter what notes I play on the keyboard, I will always be playing in key. I can change the root note and also change how the scale mode works. I can set this to guide mode, which just visually shows me the notes in the scale using the light guide, but still allows me to play notes not in the set scale. Mapped mode shows me the notes of the scale, and if I play a wrong note, Complete Control automatically corrects it to the correct key. Easy mode changes the scale to all white keys, making it easy to play in key. If you want to learn and practice different scales, there is also a learn mode, which just visually shows you the notes in the scale and also disables playback of notes not in the scale. Chords mode lets me choose different chords and play them with a single note. I have harmonizer mode selected, which builds chords like major, minor, or sevenths, or I can do chord sets, which are pre-made chord progressions. I can jump around the keys and come up with a cool chord progression. Another smart play feature is ARP mode or arpeggiator. Just like the scale mode, pressing the ARP button enables ARP mode and holding shift plus ARP lets you edit the arpeggiator settings. Using the knobs below, you can adjust how the notes are played back and the rate of the arpeggiator. A cool feature are the buttons on the top right. These are different arpeggiator slots that you can set. Select one of the slots and select a rate using knob three. Select another slot and change the rate using knob three again. Now I can quickly switch between different arpeggiator rates and even record these switches as automation. In addition to the light guide helping you with different scales, the light guide will also show you different info depending on what instrument you have loaded. I'm going to go back to my browser and load up the instrument West Africa.
With this instrument, the different colors represent different drum hits and different patterns that I can trigger. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the Complete Control S-Series is capable of. For more clarification on anything about the keyboard, all information about the keyboard is located in the manual, which can be found via the link in the description. Thanks for watching.